Good Wednesday morning! Feature flags kind of allows us to beta test parts of our system. It's a technique where we hide parts of our system behind a feature flag and this allows us to roll out to a subset of our users in a gradual manner. I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. This extra Wednesday episode of Fun Fun Function is brought to you by Launch Darkly, uh, which is a product that we're going to use when implementing feature flags in this video. If you like what you see, please do check them out and give them some love for uh, supporting the show. All right, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is to create a completely new app, an app without feature flags. That's the first thing that we're going to do. Create React. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Right, it's done. Let's CD into this thing and see if it works. NPM start. Oh, it's over here. Hang on. Oh, yes, it works. Excellent. Let's close that and close exit the development server. As the name I used here implies, we're going to create a little playlist app. And by what I mean by that is basically as an interface that at first just lists a bunch of hard coded songs. Let's go. All right, let's open up app.js. Let's get rid of this stuff here. And instead just we're gonna wanna wanna like a list of, of, of songs here. Um, like just a li and then a title. And then one more title to that one title two title three um is there a problem hang on i need to close this list that's it all right uh let me close this terminal and instead use the integrated terminal in visual studio code and uh, let's do npm start to have a look at what our interface looks like after my my edits Ooh, that's a gorgeous interface. I'm a born designer. All right, so we uh, want to change this to have some actual hard-coded data. So uh, let's do in the constructor. I'm going to assign this state uh, should be like some songs. I'm gonna code in some songs. I'm actually not gonna code in some songs. I've prepared this before. I'm gonna, you're gonna paste in some songs I wrote before. So these are some songs that we added uh, to this uh, imaginary playlist here. You see that uh, some of them are added in the end of November and some of them are added at the start of December. Uh, and we want to list them out. So this dot state dot songs dot map. Uh, and for each zone, we are going to uh, have an li. And we're going to display the name like that. Check this out. Uh, this is not allowed before super. That's correct. I need to call this super before. Oh, call in doing anything else in classes because classes are annoying. Okay, unexpected use of name, though that's true. What would name even be? It should supposed to be song, not name. Otherwise, things would be weird and magical. All right, cool. We are now listing the songs. Next up, 
I want to add some sorting. Right, so I want to think about a problem that uh, I had while I was working at Spotify. Uh, or we had. I was not alone in working on the playlist app by any means. But um, a playlist works this way. It's a, it's a list of songs. Like it, It's kind of like the... Um, uh, the the mental model for it is a mixtape, if, if you're that old and you remember mixtapes. Uh, but the general idea is that you add songs and you can rearrange the list and like the list has a specific, uh, specific order. Uh, and when you add something to a playlist, just say add uh, and then it will end up at the bottom. However, for some playlists, this works fine. If you like, a, if you're creating a playlist for like a, a gym or like a, um, some nice playlist to, to send to someone you care about, that makes sense. But if it's a playlist that is your dumping ground for new and interesting music that you wanna uh, wanna listen to, then uh, it makes a ton more sense to just have the playlist always sorted by recently added. Uh, and what that is what we're going to add here. We're going to add some sorting to it. Let's just say sort order here. Uh, and we're going to call it uh, by default. It's it's going to have a sort order. It's just going to be null. It's going to be the natural order that that is coming from the database, our hard coded array. All right, so what we're going to do is that we're going to, uh, before mapping, we're going to uh, sort uh, using a uh, sorter function. Uh, and uh, initially, the sorter function is just going to be undefined. So if you pass in undefined to sort, it's not going to do any sorting. Okay, prove it to you. Look, only one strongest dreamer, river, it's not sorted. Uh, we're going to get to this, but before I do, I want to do a little, uh, we have to fix a little caveat here, but because, uh, the sort function, uh, sorts in place. This is because, uh, the creators, uh, of this function in JavaScript are, are Satan himself. Uh, so we need to, uh, do a slice first. This is a very nice way of just making uh, a quick shallow copy of an array. Uh, so this way we get a new uh, like a copy of this array and then we sort that and then we, we map it. Uh, so that even though that this sorts in place that won't matter because it's a copy. All right, so uh, the sort order. However, however, um, if the uh, sort order uh, equals um, equals equals uh, let's say added then we are going to assign sorter uh, to be a function that uh, compares added um, let's see how we do this I made some some handy notes on how to do this while I was rehearsing this um, so that you don't think that I, I'm pulling this out of my brain butt or something like that. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do date parse, data parse, date parse, a dot added uh, and we're going to compare that to date parse. Uh, be added. I think that this is just gonna parse them out as as a number Like a unix timestamp or something, but this makes them uh, comparable uh, I think that will work except that now we are reassigning sorter So let's make it into let instead Sort order is not defined. No, that's true if this dot state dot sort order. That's what we're going for All right, cool, but nothing is ever signing itself to sort order we need to create some kind of button that does that so let's do that let's create a uh, kind of div here that is uh, called uh, natural sorting um, 
and we are going to create one that is called uh, time sorting. <laughs> I'm the worst at naming. And we're going to do on click here. Uh, I'm going to assign thingamabobs here. Uh, and you see a function and just going to do like this dot set state. Um, and I'm going to set that state to sort, sort order, sort order. I'm the best typist. Uh, I'm going to set that to added. Awesome. Um, that might work. Uh, time sorting. Oh, I clicked it, but nothing's happening. Let me pull up the inspector, see if something happens. Um, this is just a warning that we don't care about for this, this purposes. Let's check out React here. See what the sort order state is. So React, we can actually expect the state here, which is really handy in the React Chrome extension. Um, it, so it's, it's successfully assigning sort order added, but nothing is happening when I click it. Hmm. What if I just inverse this here? And I click. Yeah. Okay. So this sorting is actually working. I just flipped the thingy the other way and everything worked. So this now is can actually do this as a constant for fun um, sort by uh, like const uh, is newer cool you know what uh, we could actually just change this to be a ternary expression to be honest so that we get a can do this as a const let me rewrite this so the sorter, uh, if this state dot sort order is added, uh, then uh, the it's going to be is newer. That is the sorter. Otherwise, it's going to be undefined. I think that this looks cooler. I can remove this. Great. Okay, this this could actually just be one line. You're wasting really valuable video time on this now. Yeah, I know, but refactoring just mm, feels really good. Stop it! Stop it now! Fine. Right. So this is a bit confusing because we can't see which one we've clicked. So let's let's add some some styling to it. Uh, so, yes, I also want to do so that I can reverse the order. So, sort order null. Uh, and let's also add some style. Uh, style equals the uh, mm, 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 font weight. No, uh, if the um, yum, 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 if state this dot state dot uh, sort order equals null, then this should be bold. Otherwise, it should be normal. Normal, normal. Does that work? Now that is bold. Let me steal that. Copy paste it to this thing. And then if the sort order is added, then it should also be bold. So now this works. Wow, I have created sorting. Can I ask a question? Why are the f***ing div tags inside of the UL tag? Ha! Artistic freedom. This is valid HTML. Oh, well, it's, it's actually not valid at all. There we go. Haha, <laughs> it looks worse. All right, so we have this app. It uh, can do a bunch of things. It can can do uh, sorting. And that's actually the only thing it can do. But use your imagination and think of this, like we, we have this app in production. It's it's out there. It's used by users and stuff. It's, it's live. And we discover or we postulate we think that maybe that this time sorting 
uh, is actually a better default. Right now, natural sort order is the default, but mm, we should probably make recently added the default. Maybe. Hmm, let's try that. We want to try that. Uh, and the way our app is set up now, the way we do it is to just go in the code here and say sort order added. And now natural um, uh, natural sorting is no longer the default. It's it's time it's time sorting that is is the default now. And boom, we push that, we deploy it. That is how you deploy an app without feature flags. Simple enough. I have objections to this. 